what's going on fight fans just finished watching uh the pbc cards i uh started watching some of it last night then i called it a night then i uh, got up uh early sunday morning and uh watched the rest of it uh, i watched uh four fights and uh i actually uh end up 500 i went two for two uh let's start with uh and let me well let me start by saying that honestly the only fight i was really looking forward to on this card was the uh, marcus brown v shiny monahan card uh but uh i picked four fights and uh i won two i lost two let me start with the first fight i watched was uh jamal james over jojo dan uh it was after the main event but i'm gonna start with that one because that would have been like a opening bout card um i did pick uh uh, Jamal James in this uh, fight but uh, I actually picked him to stop Jojo Dan in like the seventh or the eighth round uh, I thought that due to the fact that Jojo Dan has been in a lot of wars that he would uh, be wore down and that uh, Jamal James could kind of show uh, what he had and maybe get the old veteran out of there but what I was surprised to find out is that uh, Jojo Dan still has some fight left in him uh, he uh, for the first half of the fight uh, he uh, he definitely uh, gave uh, Jamal James a little bit of trouble, but starting that sixth round uh, with those body shots, he really started to uh, bring it and put it on James, and he even uh, stunned him in those uh, in that round. And from there on, he fought a good fight. But Jamal James did come out with the victory, uh, uh, as uh, just the way same way I did. I thought he would. Uh, he won by UD, and uh, now he will go on to. Mm, I actually don't know who, who was left in store for him, but what I saw with Jamal James is it still seemed like he had some growing to do. Maybe uh, move him on to another, you know, fringe contender or old veteran so he can get his feet wet. I don't think he's ready for any champions yet. Uh, I didn't have a fight for him, but I do have one for Jojo Dan. Uh, I would like to see Jojo Dan mix, get in there with uh, Louis Colazzo. I think that would be an interesting fight with uh, two champions. Jojo Dan definitely proved that he's not done yet and still has some fight left in him. Let's move on to the uh, next fight, uh, a fight that I got wrong, uh, Arthur Spilka. And I'm going to be honest, I forgot the dude who he fought, another, uh, another Polish dude. Uh, I picked Spilka to win this fight. I thought that he had been off long enough. I thought that he recovered, excuse me, from the fight with uh, Deontay Wilder where he was uh, knocked out cold. And uh, I'm going to be very honest. Uh, I saw uh, the way that their bodies looked, saw the way in, and then uh, I saw them going in the ring. And due to the fact that Spilka is, was in very good shape, he generally is, and the other guy looked kind of doughy. You know, I don't have a whole lot of love for doughy looking dudes. Uh, I thought that Spilka could maybe wear him down later on in the rounds. And uh, I actually picked Spilka to win by... Uh, a UD but uh, that wasn't the case uh, the young man was uh, too strong and uh, a little too tough for Spilka and I don't know if Spilka was still showing effects from that right hand he caught from Wilder or if this young man this uh, younger Polish fighter was is really that good but I put it like this he got my attention yeah I don't remember his name but uh, he definitely drew my attention uh, hey I picked it wrong Spilka uh, uh, got knocked out and so be it and this uh, uh now this uh guy is 16 and 0 and uh maybe he'll move on to another fringe contender uh next i'm gonna go with the fight that uh i actually was interested in and that was uh uh shiny monahan against uh marcus brown uh this fight i did get right i picked marcus brown actually to stop uh monahan in the uh, eighth round uh i know that they know each other and they sparred a lot of rounds together but i thought that uh uh, that Marcus would uh, break him down with that uh, long reach and those angles he would uh, break him down it would be a pretty good fight and then by the eighth round he would have uh, got uh, shiny out of there but uh, it didn't happen that way he actually got shiny out of there uh, a lot earlier uh, and he was just really too quick and too strong I mean that right hook was uh, catching Monty hand and that one uh, right before the uh, the stoppage did him in I mean it was a hard uh, right hook and uh, then he just got shiny against the ropes and uh, all shiny did was cover up now my opinion was I thought the fight got stopped a little bit prematurely I'm not saying that shiny wasn't hurt and I'm not saying that Monahan wasn't going to be stopped but he was covered up and shelled up pretty good 
and I thought that the ref would let it go on a little longer. You know, uh, I didn't I didn't want to see Shiny get hurt, but maybe you know give him a few more seconds, even ten more seconds, to see if he was going to be able to recover, slip out, and maybe uh you know get uh Marcus on the back foot. But that's not what happened. The referee stops the fight, and you know that is what it is. As for Marcus Brown, what is he going to do next? I'm going to go with what he said. He called out Adonis Stevens. Let's see that. You know, I might have picked a different fight for him, but since he's saying bring on Stevenson, let's see him fight uh, Superman, and let's let uh, Adonis get in there with a guy that's actually live, and let's see that fight. Hopefully, uh, later in the year, uh, Al Heyman can make that fight happen. Now, let's move on to the uh, last fight, uh, the main event, uh, the ghost Robert Guerrero against Omar Figueroa. I got this fight wrong. I actually picked Robert Guerrero. Uh, I've always liked Robert Guerrero since he was a, uh, a featherweight. And what I thought would happen was the game plan that uh, Guerrero said he was going to use, he was going to get in there and box. I thought that's what he would do. And I picked him to actually uh, win the fight by split decision. Uh, when the fight started, it looked like exactly that's what Robert Guerrero was going to do. It looked like he was going to get in there and he was going to box and not get in the phone booth. But after he got knocked down by uh, Figueroa, that's exactly what happened. He, he, he fought Omar's fight. He got in the phone booth and Omar could not miss with that uh, lead left uppercut. And uh, I have to uh, give Virgil uh, Hunter uh, credit because he actually said what I was thinking why Guerrero was kind of fighting amateurs every time he pulled out he kept pulling out with his head straight up and that's another reason why he was being hurt by those uppercuts because when uh Figueroa was hitting with those uppercuts it was snapping his head back which those those punches hurt instead of him you know sliding out or coming out with his with his hands up and his head down he was coming out with his hands about at his belly with his head straight up in the air and uh you know, hey, he got knocked down seven times, and uh, the referee was definitely right to stop that fight. Uh, as for Omar Figueroa, uh, I don't know uh, what would be next for him. You know, uh, I nothing in that World Three division uh, really uh, jumps out at me, but I can tell you what jumps out at me for Robert Guerrero, a fighter that I've always liked and respected. Retirement. You know, it's time for him just to call it quits. Uh, I saw a fighter that was shot. I saw a fighter that had nothing left. I saw a fighter with no punch resistance. And Robert was in good shape. So that wasn't it. I just think that since he went up in weight, all the wars uh, just got to him. You know, when, when he was a featherweight and a junior lightweight, Robert Guerrero, in my opinion, was a great fighter. When he jumped over, uh, I'm sorry, when he, then he went to lightweight, but he jumped over super lightweight and went straight to welterweight. I think at that point, he became an average fighter at 100 and. 40 to 147 pounds he was just an average fighter and I think that he believed too much in his powers and those wars uh, beat him down kind of like uh, Chris Bird uh, remember Chris Bird when it was uh, was fought a heavyweight which he never should have been a heavyweight and I think that uh, and if you remember when Chris Bird went down to light heavyweight and he got knocked out I think it was from all of those years from those bigger punchers just wearing him that just wore him down I think that's what happened with Robert Guerrero and I think that uh, that should be his last fight uh, he doesn't need to get in the ring and fight again. It should pretty much be a wrap from that point. All right, fight fans, that's all I have on that PBC card. It was, uh, you know, uh, I watched four fights. They were all, you know, relatively decent fights. But uh, that's all I got. Catch y'all later.